All right, in this video, we're gonna find the maximum vertical distance between the parabola y equals three minus x squared and the line y equals x plus one on the interval negative two to one. I'm gonna to try to graph these functions first. So the parabola three minus x squared, it's a parabola with a y-intercept to three which uh, opens downward, so it looks something like this. And then, so that's the parabola, and then our line y equals x plus one uh, would have a slope of one and a y-intercept of one. <clears throat> okay, so notice we can tell, well, so one thing we might know is where those intersection points are. Um, because I have a suspicion the intersection points are actually these values here. So let's just check that. We would want to know when the parabola is equal to the, the line. And then that'll likely produce two solutions. Okay, and so <clears throat> I'm going to add x squared to both sides and minus 3. Um, and that gives us uh, x equals negative 2 and 1. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so now we know, um, we know that those intersection points are actually determining our interval. So now we need a model. So any point on this parabola, so we, we want to we wanna represent that distance, right? So d. Um, any point on this parabola has coordinates x, comma, well, if the y-coordinate is 3 minus x squared, we're just going to call it 3 minus x squared. Any point on this line has coordinates x, comma, x plus 1, since it's on the line. Now, if you want a vertical distance, you subtract y-coordinates. So that minus that is the vertical distance. And that distance varies, obviously, between negative 2 and 1, but we want to find where it's a maximum. So um, I can now go right to d of x, right? My model, the distance between the two points, d of x equals um, 3 minus x squared, that y-coordinate, minus x plus 1, which I'll clean up a little bit. So this becomes 3 minus x squared minus x minus 1, or negative x squared minus x plus 2. So there's a model for the distance. I already know, because they told us, we're only looking on the interval negative 1 to 1. <clears throat> so I didn't really, so the constraint, I guess, is somewhat embedded in the, um, let me talk about constraints as part of these optimization problems. The constraint is really that these points are on the curve, on the respective curves. <clears throat> but now we can do calculus, so calculus. All right, so we've got a model over here. We take its derivative. So that would be negative 2x minus 1. It's not undefined anywhere, so our critical points are where it's equal to 0. And this produces x is equal to negative one-half. <clears throat> so how do we know, so we found a critical point, how do we know it's a max? We go and we examine, so I've been using the first derivative test here. Um, I could also use the second derivative test, maybe I'll throw that in as an alternative. We put our critical points and then we just got to make sure we in fact found a max. Um, <clears throat> so let's plug in, oh, I don't know, plug in like, um, you could even plug in 1 as an endpoint, that's fine. If I plug in 1 into my, uh, into my derivative, I'm going to get negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, minus 1, which is negative 3. Uh, so I get a negative, which means my function is decreasing. And if I plug in, for example, negative 1, I would get 2 minus 1, which is positive. So my function's increasing, so I found a max. So that's the first derivative test, 
right? We're looking for a change in sign of the second derivative. Uh, sorry, a change in the sign of the first derivative. The second derivative test we could also do because we have a critical point. So this means, this is optional. You don't have to do this as well. I'm just throwing it in as an, an something to keep in mind. Um, so like, for example, I know that d prime of um, negative a half is equal to zero because it's a critical point. What I want to look at is the second derivative. So the second derivative is pretty easy to find. It's just negative 2. So d double prime of x is negative 2, which is less than 0. So together, that tells us, right, the critical point tells us this. A negative second derivative means essentially concave down in that area. So that produces a max. This is optional, and it's a bonus remark. So just the second derivative test. Okay, what's the so we, we we're confident that this max distance is happening at negative a half. What's the question again? What is the maximum vertical distance? Well, I would just go back to our function that models our vertical distance, which is right here, and we plug in our negative a half, right? We have it as a function of x. So it happens when x is negative a half. So it's negative, negative a half squared minus negative a half plus 2, it's negative a fourth plus a half plus 2, or um, 2 and a half is 5 halves, 5 halves minus a fourth, which is 10 fourths minus a fourth, which is 9 fourths. So the maximum vertical distance between those two curves is 9 fourths, which I guess I'll punch in here. It's also 2.25 if you use decimals. And that is our answer.